Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, August 23rd, 2021, and I'm here for my weekly cross-stitching update. It's a little earlier than usual when I'm filming now, um, but my husband ran to take some people to the airport, and so I'm actually home alone. <laughs> Just me and Smokey. So I thought I'd take the advantage of filming my video right now, even though I'm not quite ready. That's okay. I have quite a bit to share with you today, so we should just jump right in. First off, I have a little bit of a shop update. I guess I should maybe do that first. So I had a few, a couple patterns that I was making for customers, but they are patterns that I am now offering to everybody. So I wanted to share those with you. The first one is a cat's will and testament. And you'll see this poem floating around the internet. Um, and I made a cross stitch pattern out of it. It's a square pattern, <clears throat> 254 by 254, so it's a little larger, but it does have no back stitching. If that floats your boat, it has the entire poem. It has four unique kitty cats in there, and it's pretty cute. The one I made for my customer had specific cats that matched her cats, and and had little names back stitched underneath each kitty cat. So if you wanted to personalize it, you could. Um, yeah, so that one's available now in my shop. And I had another, another pair of patterns that were pieces of the Twas the Night Before Christmas poem. I have the poem in its entirety in my shop already. And I had somebody who wanted just the first phrase and the last phrase in more, in bolder fonts for decorating. So I made two patterns that are complimentary coordinating they're the same size towards the night before Christmas and these and um, happy Christmas to all and to all a good night the border is the same as the border of the full poem that I have in my shop the insides so, and there is some back stitching on the holly but everything else is full crosses so those are cute and then finally <laughs> I managed to just go with it. It didn't import the way I wanted it to in Pattern Keeper, but it is usable and it's the way that my typography works. I managed to get my last temperature, my most recent temperature pattern posted and live in my shop. And this is Temperature Butterflies. I'm very excited to release this. This is this current year. I'll be stitching it in 2022. I have three different butterflies represented because each butterfly represents one month. So there's the exact amount of patches in the butterfly or the days in that month. February is unique because it's got 28 days, like more of a swallowtail. And then 31 days and 30 days are slightly different butterflies to account for different numbers of days. And the 31 is actually these bottom two little, um, little patches, mini patches are both day 31 because it had to be symmetrical. Butterflies are symmetrical. So that's exciting. And I chose colors based on actual colors of butterflies in the wild. And it's kind of hard to see here, but some of these hottest colors are red because there are some solid red butterflies out there. And there's some purples and blues, greens, yellows, oranges. So yay. I'm excited about that one. The, um, the bodies and around the wings is solid cross stitches for identifying, you know, stitching around each patch, but the antennas are back stitching. So that's the only back stitching in here are the antennas. So yay, <laughs> finally, finally got that out. I'm so excited. So I had a couple of you, I posted it, I think Friday, I just couldn't help myself. Um, and I had a, a handful of people already discover it. Maybe they have my Etsy shop favorited or something. I'm not really sure how that works, but hey, now all of you know too. <laughs> and I have something else that I will be doing personally that isn't haul yet, but it will be hopefully soon. I was asked if I wanted to participate in another Fat Quarter Shop stitch along but this one is either a stitch or a quilt along, and I actually want to do the quilt version. So 
this will be going live on their blog on Tuesday. So I'll be posting my video late Monday and it should be ready to go when you see this to go look for more information. This is the So Happy Quilt and Stitch Along. And so this is what the quilt looks like. There's also a cross stitch pattern, which I guess I can put up here if you're interested in that. I was actually really interested in this quilt because it's a mini quilt. It's 26 and a half by 50 and a half, so it's not huge. And I really kind of wanted to get back into quilting. I've been seeing quilting around. It's I quilted about 20 years ago now, probably more than 20 years ago. When I was in high school, I worked at Joann's for my senior year of high school and what's a girl to do when she's cutting all this pretty fabric than to take up quilting? <laughs> so I did a couple quilts in high school, haven't really done much since, but I did enjoy it and I've kind of been itching to try it again. So this might be a nice segue because it's a mini to get back into it. And there's motivation, outside motivation, which I, I tend to need to be able to get it done. So it's going to be broken up into parts, uh, hence the stitch along, quilt along quality where we'll be doing different parts, different weeks and posting progress. So hopefully I can keep up with that and blow the dust off my sewing machine and <laughs> see how that goes. So I have ordered materials from them, which hopefully will be coming soon. I'm very excited. So I'll be sharing that with you when it comes in. And I guess we can get right into uh, what I worked on this week. So first we'll talk travel stitching, which was pretty decent, again, for the first time in a long time. I guess I'll start with my temperature piece that I'm working. This is my typography, temperature typography. I'm working in August. I did the G and the U this time. I did this in a couple different sittings because it was a little bit more stitching, but I got it all done. One over one, full crosses on a pale blue 28 count even weave. And as you can see, it's been real nice <laughs> this week. 70s and 80s, so exciting. It's it's felt really, really nice. It's supposed to get another heat wave uh, coming up here at the end of the week. But I we really had a nice, nice week. Cooled off at night we could go for walks during the day without it being hot it was, it was very glorious <laughs> so definitely not summery at all but I was thinking or noticing that we had some green patches in the August of my demo my demo cover example which I believe was 2017 and these the tea was the hottest colors of my range so even within just a few weeks it happened a lot before where it got down into the 70s and then back up into the 100 and 110s so who knows <laughs> but it's fun so i enjoyed working on that this week hopefully get one more letter done <clears throat> this week i'm trying to think i'll come back most likely on the 30th yeah so i won't have the t done when i see you next but it'll be I'll have the S done next week. So my other thing that I've been working on mainly for travel stitching is Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries, Cozy Cafe Club, with which is our mystery stitch along for 2021. We're now on part five, which is sparkling water in a can. And I make decent progress. It's not done, but <clears throat> I've been enjoying this and I've been using it for a few challenge prompts on Facebook. Let's see. So here is where this is. This is on 25 count prim vintage cloth, one over one. And all the called for colors in the drinks and then I'm, I subbed out some fancy floss for the border colors. So here's my sparkling water can. I finished all of the header and all of these colors that were down here. I color completed them within this part and then started in on the other colors. So I started in on, I think I finished 
no, it's still on my needle, I think. So I have a little bit more of this light gray. And then I'll, there's, a, you know, a few more background colors in there as well. And I think there's even some beads for the kiwi, kiwi and dragon fruit seeds. So I'll have to go see if I have any petite beads. I'm doing this one over one on 25 count. So they give Mill Hill bead numbers for if you were doing it on a normal count fabric, which I am not. So I chose, last time I chose a comparable bead that was a petite bead in in like a, a raspberry color because it was going to be for the beads, for the berries, I mean. So that's coming along. The next part will come out on the 25th which is coming up here pretty quickly. So I don't know that I'll finish it in time, but I'm gonna keep plugging away and just, I'll get to go right into the next part. But hopefully I'll be able to finish the next part early so I can spend some time on some of my other travel pieces. Like this one I'm about to show you. I ended up kidding this up or getting this started, even though I wasn't done with Cozy Cafe Club. The 12th Prim Stitch Series pattern. Hands and Heart to God. It's the last one. I have all the other 11 finished. And I got this started because my son had his first cross country meet. And I wanted to take something that was all contained in, in this is like a half size bag that fits just that pattern. And I threw in <clears throat> my square of fabric and my scissors and a couple links of thread and something I could just more portable. And since I'm doing Cozy Cafe Club for some challenges on Facebook, I'm also tallying my stitches. So it works okay while I'm in the valet, valet line at school waiting stationary, but when I'm on the bleachers, it, it was just easier to turn this inside out so the pattern was facing out, keep it in my bag and just pull this out and stitch and it was a lot more convenient. So I went ahead and started this, not a whole lot to see yet, but I got one finger done. I'm working my way up the next finger. So I'll go up and down all the fingers and then work on the palm. I decided I have been, this is also 25 count vintage cloth in prim, the same stuff I'm doing Cozy Cafe Club on. One over one full crosses, except where I feel like adding specialty stitches. And I decided for this one, I wasn't gonna do specialty stitches on the skin because I thought any specialty stitch might look a little odd for skin, because skin is pretty smooth. So, and they're only three stitches wide, so I'm like, eh, I'll just go ahead and, and cross stitch the hand, even though it's fairly large. Try to do some specialty stitch on this, the heart and maybe the leaves and the middle of the star. I'm not sure yet about the petals. I might just do the leaves, because I have done a lot of um, satin stitching on the leaves in the past, so I'll probably do that at least, so. It's kind of my plan on that one. So I'm not sure how much more I'll get on this in the near future, but it is started. So I had to share that because I want to be able to stay caught up on the Frosted Pumpkin Sal. So whenever I get clue six finished, which is the one that's coming out this week, then I'll go back to this and work on this some more in the car. I also worked on my buttons and beads kit for Mill Hill Monday, and I'll hopefully work on it again today. This one, I have been picking my colors from the top down. However, there was a challenge prompt in my Facebook group that said to work on the colors of your flag, and this has red, white, and blue in it. So I thought, well, sure. <laughs> So I did a red color till completion, and then I did the start of the white. And so this week I'll finish the white and maybe do some light blue to go along. I know light blue is not our flag color, but all of the regular blue is finished already, so I think it'll be okay. So here is where I am now, which is kind of cool. You can see the hummingbird coming together. There's some red in the flowers so yeah that's exciting this is called for everything that came in the kit 14 count perforated paper two strands and i haven't yet done any beads 
so I'll probably not get into any beads this week either. So I'll just have to wait and see when that shows up in the in the plan. But that's fun. I like pulling that out every week. Um, this week I also managed to get back to my waterfall in Yosemite. Pardon the sunspot. Hopefully it won't be too distracting. <clears throat> but filming this early, <laughs> I have to contend with that. So this is my daily stitching piece. I'm trying to do at least 65 stitches a day to go along with Full Coverage Fanatics um, year-long challenge to get 21 stitches, 21,000 stitches in 2021. And I'm ahead of schedule. I ran the numbers and I still have, I have more than I need, even though I took some time off recently for other things. I'm doing well with my challenge. So potentially, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> At the end of the year, if I finish this challenge, I might start early on grapes to do that. That's going to be my daily piece next year. Let's see. I'll remind you what that looks like. It's my still life. Also a golden kite, also a full cross piece. I might start working on this every day, not necessarily for a set number of stitches, but more just to get the, the rest of the park threads worked in. So if I finish my waterfall piece challenge early, I may switch over and try to get this prepped because it's possible I could finish it in 2022. Okay, I took a quick break to let the garbage truck go by. <laughs> Another bad timing for doing this this early in the morning, but here is where I got to on Waterfall in Yosemite. If I hold it back, you deal with the sunspot, but I wanted to be able to have a good before and after for, we'll see. So I'm trying to think, cause I worked just the last couple of days I've been working along in, in this section a little bit. But I did do some rocks as well. I did two colors in the rocks. So that should look a little bit new. And I think, I don't know if you've seen, I did a little bit of this dark, darkest shade in, in some of the, these areas. So you may not have seen that either since I worked on this last. So that's pretty fun. This is on 18 count antique white Ada with two strands. And that's pretty fun. So I'm excited to keep plugging away on that every day, except for Mill Hill Monday. And Mill Hill Monday is my bonus piece on Monday. And then that's my bonus piece every other day. And with I do a little bit on each of those. And then the rest of my stitching time gets my focus piece, which is what we can launch into now. Because my focus pieces so far this month have been um, my arbitrary August picks, which are randomly selected whips projects from my, that I haven't yet worked on in 2021. So it's been fun to get them out. It's also been fun to get my less favored whips to a place where they're more favored, if that makes any sense. So both two of my pieces this week fall into that category. So the first one is Friends of the Library, which is actually Needlepoint. It's a Bucilla kit, super cute design. It's meant to be stitched on 12 count canvas, printed canvas with tapestry wool in a half stitch, continental, continental tent stitch with a little bit of back stitching. And I have given up on it. I'm going to restart it <clears throat> because it's not fun. The pattern, I'll show you part of the pattern, looks like that. And I had a different needlepoint kit that was more blobby than this. This at least has a little stair steps. But my brain needs to know where the stitches go. And it needs to have room for all the stitches that are shown on the pattern. And especially if it's if it's a stair step blocky style, I want to be able to put them all in there where they go. The problem is 
the picture was printed on the canvas is too small and it's a little crooked so it's not gonna match the pattern and I kind of at one point I had gone I had started this like literally over 20 years ago and so recently the last couple years I went through and I <clears throat> attempted to make it the proper width that would match the pattern so that I could then just follow the pattern work up regardless of what it said on the on the count on the printed canvas when I got into it I started to do a little bit of stitching on it this week and it was off somewhere it wasn't big enough it wasn't right I just I threw in the towel I said nope not gonna do this anymore so what I'm gonna do is I am recharting it by hand one block at a time in my pattern software and I have a little bit of along the bottom done already so when it's done I can use it in pattern keeper except for the little a couple of the back stitching elements that I can just come back and use this for um, or actually use a printed version of my pattern keeper one um, and I'm probably gonna you do cro regular cross stitch not the canvas because I really hate working on a scroll frame and I was using the scroll frame because continental ten stitch warps a lot <clears throat> and I figured that would help keep the warp from happening as much let's just avoid all of that shall we so I'm thinking of maybe doing it on 18 count and with a regular cross stitch I thought about maybe trying to use the tapestry wool and like one strand half stitch but <clears throat> I think I'll just convert it to DMC let my daughter play with the wool <laughs> and just totally, totally start fresh. Do something completely different. So there's really nothing to show. I did a few stitches on it, but I'm abandoning it as it is right now. So I will be restarting that at some point in the future <clears throat> once I get the pattern fixed. So stay tuned. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me because I want to keep stitching and it takes time to redo a pattern. So that one is... A bust but also a happy thing because going forward I'll have a project that I actually enjoy working on and might actually get finished it's not that big because it's on 12 count it looks big but it's really the stitch count is not that big it's less than 200 by 200 so once I get it done or once I get it charted right I think it'll go pretty quick my next one <clears throat> was fine I enjoyed working on it no troubles this is ink circles tapestry and I'm doing it with conversion of my own with Victorian motto threads and I did a couple of these motifs up here I think I will work my way across the whole top actually and work down because I tried to think well maybe I should do across the top and just kind of work this corner or do something like this but I'm like eh, I like top down so I did these this this motif and this motif I'll work my way to the corner but then I think I'm gonna go this way and work my way to the corner and then do the like these ones and just kind of work my way down and it is obviously mandala style so if I'm working on this motif and I still have thread on my needle I can do it over here so I think it'll be more efficient that way as well so that's kind of my plan going forward this is on 28 count ivory jobelin I think or antique white jobelin and here's where I got to one over one full crosses with all of those specialty threads they're most most of them are Victorian motto threads that she made for specific patterns and not super variegated I have one or two in here that are a little more variegated but overall they're just pretty so I did these two up here I did work on it a little bit longer than I was supposed to according to my um, according to my rotation plan, but I wanted to get this motif finished and I also wanted to get the certain amount of stitches for a Facebook group challenge prompt. I think I did the two challenge prompts on this actually, which is kind of fun. So my next one is Chaplin's Garden, which also is getting a tiny bit of a facelift. I'm not restarting it, but I'm redoing the kit organization a little bit so every time I work on this I find one new way to make it easier to work on and I I think it should be 
easier and easier the more I play with it. <laughs> and eventually, we'll hopefully get finished. So this is a kit. It came with a gazillion colors. I actually counted them as I was redoing the organization. There's 96 colors in here, which is a lot for a kit. It came with four of these thread cards with just numbers, card D with a bunch of numbers, and then all of two or three different colors in each hole. And you had a couple different, like I already had, I think this is all on this one actually. It already had a list of like the color name and which card it was and the code, which are actually DMC numbers, thankfully, which is really cool. And at one point long ago, I went through and like put the card hole next to the, the symbol, you know, on the symbol key so I'd know where to look for these colors. But as I was working on them, I'm like, this is super inefficient. So then I started writing on here. I'm like, this is still not working. It needs to be separate numerically in order like the symbol key like can we do that please <laughs> yes yes we can so i made three cardstock hole punches most of these two are full this one's partial each color has a spot and i will be putting the symbols along next to it as well as i go so far i've just done the ones that i was working on this time as well as whichever threads was a buddy in that hole since they had usually had two or three in each hole so I have so far on the new cards the ones that I was working on this week plus their their hole buddies <laughs> so there's still a lot of threads in the original kit cards but I'm hoping eventually this will help and maybe at some point I'll come in here and just spend some time organizing because I really want to get that finished, that organization process finished, because that'll make it so much nicer to work on. But I did do some stitching. If I hadn't done any of that organizing, I probably would have gotten more done on this. I didn't get to the goal I wanted in my Facebook group challenge, but it's okay. <clears throat> so here is... Chaplin's Garden now. It uh, comes all the way down here. I only worked in the top, so I think it'll be okay if you don't see as much of that. And as you can see, I worked over here in the treetops. And it, there's actually pretty sparse tree tops over here, so like this part is pretty much finished, except for a few lines of back stitching, which I'll put in later once I have a few more cross stitches done. Because I wanted to do top-down symbols again. So I was picking symbols based on top-down on this side this time. This side is already caught up to like here. So now everything... How awkward can this be? Everything from here up is finished pretty much. So I'll... I'm tempted though when I'm working on this to... Just to make it ease of... Ease of work to pick a side so if i'm doing top down during this particular rotation on this side i'll do top down on this side of the house and then later i'll do top down on this side of the house so that i can kind of fill in an area a little bit more i do like though that because this is 14 count 14 count light blue ada if i didn't say using kit threads which are cut a little shorter than i sometimes have my threads they don't go very far before they run out, which is actually kind of nice in order to get a section completed faster because I'm not stitching as far with one thread. I stitch all like this green and it's done. I stitch this cream and it's done. I do another cream, it's done. I do some purple and it's done. And so I'm kind of slowly filling in this area because my strings are just finishing fairly quickly and I can move on to the next color sooner than I might normally. So. That's actually kind of nice for this one since it's so confetti heavy. And Smokey is coming up. She's going to come join us. Hi. You going to come help? I'm almost ready to pull my arbitrary August picks. Let me see if I have anything back here to share. 
Oh yeah, I have one more, a couple more to share before I do Arbitrary August. So I worked on His Name is Jesus when I st stitched with Desiree this week. got a little bit more done on that one. So this is by Joyful Expressions and I'm doing mine with instead of three shades of the same color I'm doing three different colors gold, blue, and red. Hi! And here is where I got to. I guess I should put it on this. This is kind of see-through. This is Ivory, jo Ivory Lugana. I think I said it wrong last time. 28 count ivory lugana one over one full crosses and i did the word omega and savior so that's pretty fun and i think i'm going to do a couple more little words on each side before i start the big center motif which actually the highest point of the center motif the letter n is right here so but i think i want to do a couple more of the little ones on either side before i start working on the big one so that's fun. And Desiree over at the Addicted Stitcher, she's working on this with me. And she started in the middle, so she's been working on the big piece, the big, his name is Jesus, the really big letters, and is almost done. I think she has the word name yet to be finished, but she's making good progress on that. Hey, Katie. So here is Smokey. Where'd you go? There she is. So, quick, quick smoky break. No biting. No biting. She loves us. She's always following us around. She's a very, a lot more people person than Cinnamon was. Cinnamon was a little standoffish most of her life. Kind of like, I'll love on you when I feel like it. <laughs> but, but Smokey does seem to have more of a, I want to be with my people personality, which is really cute. Especially since there's five of us. She almost always has somebody to hang out with, so yeah. And one more thing that goes along with my September plans, how I told you I'm going to do four birthday starts each weekend in September to go along with my 40th birthday. I was chatting with Terry over at Terry Lee Crafts, and she has a September birthday also. And it's a milestone as well. She wanted to do five new starts including one that I had. So she's like, well, why don't you start it <laughs> on, she said, why don't you start it on my birthday? So I'm like, well, I don't see why not because I've had this for years and I haven't started it. So let's go for it. This is a gold collection dimensions kit called Alan Malley's Gracious Era. I'll probably just call it Gracious Era, but this is a pretty Victorian Christmas scene, or winter scene at least, that I love and enjoy. It looks like the ha the background is mostly half-stitched, so that should go pretty fast. It's a full kit, never never even opened it. It's 16 count Ada. All the, th all the threads. <laughs> so I'll be starting this on the 21st. And it's not one of my birthday starts, it's Terry's birthday start. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to be starting that on her birthday and I'll start it with her. And I figured to go along with that rotation, it's a Monday, Tuesday. I think the 21st is on a Tuesday. The Monday I will th throw in my autumn start on the Celtic Lady Sampler to go along with that. I ran out of room to do a lot of stuff in September because of all those starts, but it's good. <laughs> I'll have fun. Working on all of them. So let's see. I think that's all my previous work. So let's go on to Arbitrary August for this week. Ooh, glare. Let's get my tiny decisions open and go to the small category first. And this one, yeah, this one is the one that Winter Rose got picked before I fixed the, um, before I made it non-repeating. So if Winter Rose gets picked, I will spin again. But other than that, 
a lot of these on here I'm really excited to work on, so I will be happy with, I think, every, any of them. <laughs> Let's see what I get to work on this week. Ha! So I'll go ahead and spin again, because I want to make sure I get to a variety. So I did Winter Rose at the beginning of August. If you want to see that, you can head back a couple videos. Let's see what I'm going to work on this week. Ooh! Winter Wonderland Band Sampler. That's my Chatelaine. It's a non-traditional Chatelaine. It's band sampler instead of mandala. And I'm excited because I keep wanting to get it out and I just never have the excuse. So that'll be fun. Let me write that down. Okay, so I'll have one more small spin next week for the 30th and the 31st. So there'll be one more of those. And then hopefully the rest of them I can fit in somewhere, probably October, November, December, to hopefully touch every project at least once in 2021. That's kind of my goal. And for the medium wheel, I totally screwed it up last time. So if something gets picked again that I already worked on, I'll spin again. So there's a couple of these on here now that I've worked on before because <sighs> technology. <laughs> so... Okay, that's a new one. To Everything, a season sampler. And that's a kit that, again, drives me a little batty sometimes with how many color changes there are. But it can be helpful, I guess, that it's kit, kit um, thread that's cut short because then I can, again, do a little bit and then move on to the next color and get a section finished faster. I'm gonna write this down. And then spin for my final project, which will be in my large category, but still on my medium wheel, because I don't have any large pieces that have not yet been worked on in 2022 or 21. So let's see what it spins next. Fantasy Triptych, which already got worked on, so I'll spin again. Eventually, they'll all be blacked out again. Oh, yay! In the beginning. That's a fun one. That'll be nice to do that for the weekend. Get a little bit more time on it. This is... One of my oldest whips, I know when I started it my freshman year of college, but I think I have like Chaplin's Garden and the Shoe Sampler. Some of those I think I started in high school. So it's not my oldest, but it is very old. So I am excited to work on this because it is cute. And I would eventually like to get it done. <laughs> All right, so let's go get those three and show you. Smokey decided to take a nap on my lap because, you know, that's what kitties do. Now I have to leave. I have to move. Hey, kitty. Yeah. So I'm going to have to dislodge Smokey and go get these to show you, but I will be right back. It's the Smokey show. She's still in my chair when I went to get my stuff. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> she thought uh, she thought the show was all about her with because it was I left the tripod aimed right at her <laughs> anyways let me show you my projects for this week hi mm -hmm. sorry to let Smokey steal the show winter wonderland band sampler so this is my Chatelaine it's one that I discovered and I really liked. There's also a summer version that I have as well, but I don't have, they don't have spring and fall. And I've tried emailing um, Martina's daughter to see if there's works in, if, if spring and fall had been charted and maybe just weren't on the website, if there's any plan, but I haven't heard anything. So I don't know. I, at the very least, I'll just have winter and summer, and that'll be okay. So this is my, the digital mock-up for Winter Wonderland Band Sampler. Their fabric here shows a lot darker, but the recommended fabric on European Cross Stitch, where I bought all my beads, was ice blue, ice blue linen, and that's what I have. So I think it looks really pretty on what I have as well. I did not say my garden is my winter wonderland because living in Southern California, 
my garden will never be my winter wonderland. So instead I charted a Bible verse that says he gives snow like wool and I put that there instead. So here is where I have my starting point on this one so far. I am com fully completing it from the top down. So I have specialty stitches and beads all finished. All the white is silk lame, so it's a slightly sparkly. 17 is when I started this apparently. So maybe I'll put find a place to put 2020 at the bottom. Or 2020, what in the world? Whenever I finish this, 2022, 23, <laughs> Whenever I finish this, I can put that date at the bottom. So I'm currently working, looks like a little one over one deer. There's a one over one squirrel, two squirrels and some birds. There's a, ba a birdhouse right here. So some of those features are what I will work on this time. So I'll do a little closer for that, for my before and after. So this is light blue, ice blue Belfast linen, 32 count. And most of this is one over one, except for those little animals which are two over two or most of this is two over two and the little animals are one over one and this is my to everything a season sampler and it was a needles and hoops kit by Busilla that I got way back in the day as well. Another one of my oldest whips. I'm, I've been working in this corner to try to get that finished. It's been slow going. I think at one point last year, I came and did some letters just to do something a little bit simpler. So I think I might've done some birds last year too. So anyways, we'll see where I'm feeling, where I wanna go. This is a, this is available as a digital chart on Cooler Design Studio website. I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's not called To Everything A Season Sampler, which is what this kit was called. It's more like traditional sampler, I think. And you can find it there if you'd like it. It's not a kit, but you can find it um, there. I have organized my threads on a piece of cardboard which I think is the cardboard that came in the kit because this is really floppy now and it probably had a piece of cardboard to stiffen the kit and I just cut it up <laughs> and hole punched it. This is kit fabric as well but it was 28 count even weave. So I'm doing this two over two and here's my starting point. Yeah it's really pretty. I love the colors. It's just a little bit hard to work on. Lots of color changes and very soft fabric so I have to really watch my tension. So I could work on this corner motif and get to the edge of the design. That seems like it might be a good thing to do. I can also keep going and do these raspberries over here to try to get the whole top done but I think for this week I'll probably focus on here since I've already started this area. Get this corner motif finished which looks like which looks like this. So some leaves so that may be what I focus on this time. We'll see how it goes. I'll give this two days. There is a little bit of specialty stitches in here as well, which is probably why they kitted this up with even weave instead of Ada. My tummy growled. I still haven't had my tea because I, I was waiting. I wanted to get this video done ASAP. I need to go have some tea in it and a snack. <laughs> so my last one, which I'll do during the large rotation, set Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is my In the Beginning sampler. This is an old kit that was my roommate's aunt's. And I don't, I haven't been able to find it in a new form, but once in a while you can find the kit on Amazon or eBay or something. So it's really cute. I'm doing it on 18 count antique white, it looks like, with 
very little margin, but I think it was probably whatever was in the craft store at the time. And I just went with it. So I have, it's as far as I've gotten. And the bird and the giraffe and the butterfly and the hummingbird and the monkey and the bird's nest, this, this area is all finished. Back stitching and all. So I've, I'm focusing now, the top, the head of the peacock is done. I can do the rest of the peacock in this corner, which has moon and stars. It's probably where I'll focus. And probably a little bit more along the border with, with these uh, leaves. So I'll focus on this stuff this time. So I would like to get, start working again, like I like to do now, top down. And get this corner done. And then I can start adding some words at some point too, as I work my way down. So that's my starting point. Maybe I'll show more of an up close of this corner. This is likely where I will be working. Let's see how much I can get done. Looks like I have some, a single strand of brown on my needle. It was maybe from the details on the peacock, but I don't know that I have anything else to backstitch right now because <laughs> the peacock's not done stitched, so I can't go any farther on that. I don't know. I'll take a look and see what I might have been doing. So that'll be fun. Work on either the moon and the stars, the leaves, or the peacock. And maybe a little bit of all of it. And I think that's everything that I need to show you this week. Um... Yeah, the Cozy Cafe Club should come out part six on the 25th. So hopefully I can, and I guess that's Wednesday. So I have two days to finish up the part five. Not sure that's gonna happen, but I'll get as close as I can <laughs> and then move on to part six. I'll work on his, the, the waterfall piece every, every day and hummingbirds today. I may stitch with Colette, the highway stitcher, on Thursday, I think he said. <laughs> so if I stitch with her on that day, I might work on a different project, but we'll have to wait and see what we decide to do. Enough rambling. I will go get my tea and a snack, and I hope you have a wonderful day with everything that you're working on, and happy stitching. Bye.